We have always counted things. Since we first became humans, hundreds of thousands of years ago, we counted the days that passed, the food we'd gathered, the animals we'd killed. But we didn't have numbers yet, so we would just draw lines for each one thing we counted. On a cave wall, or on rocks, or animal bones. Quite recently, about 10,000 years ago, humans figured out you could plant seeds to grow food. We started farming, and this allowed us to stay put in one place. For most of our time on Earth, we humans have been hunter-gatherers, moving around without ever making a permanent home. Farming also allowed many more people to live all together because we could get more food from one bit of land, and it was the kind of food we could store for later. But, because there was all this food, and all these people and animals living together, we ran into problems. We got lots of deadly diseases from living so close to other humans and animals. But more importantly for maths, our counting lines all got a bit much. So people started using things to represent groups of things. The first civilization to do this were the Sumerians, who used a small clay cone to represent one thing, a clay ball for 10 things and a big cone for 60 things. Then they realised they didn't even need the things, they could just draw the things on clay and these symbols and pictures were the first numbers. Woo! In fact, they were the first writing. So next time you do some maths, just stop and think about those people who invented the first numbers. Imagine how hard it would be if we still had to do all our maths using counting lines like the hunter-gatherers. But how did we get from the Sumerian spheres and cones to the number symbols we use today? Watch part two to find out what happens next.